Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at how to solve a very common problem that main development teams have. And this problem is how to get around a configuration issue where certain developers need to hit some resources and other developers need to hit other resources, but you don't want to modify the configuration file that's checked in your source repository because now you're just causing all sorts of pain and all sorts of headache for a lot of different people. The exact scenario that I'm talking about here is I'm a remote worker. I work out of my house and I don't want to go across the wire and hit our databases that are you know, on our development servers for testing purposes. I want to hit a database that's local to me. But at the same time, my developers in our home office don't want to hit my database. They want to hit the one local to them. Well, we, ha we all share one configuration file and I don't want to check out that file and modify it and check it back in because then they'll get my updates. I also don't want to take a local copy that's writable, hard code or make some manual changes because then when somebody else has changes, you know, change the config file or I change the config file, we have all these merge issues and possibility of me checking in my database path or them checking in their database path. So in order to solve this problem, I took a look at the open source projects out there to see how they solve, how they solve this. And the way that they did it is by using NANT and tokens within the configuration file. And this is a pretty slick solution. It's pretty easy. It takes all of maybe 10 or 15 minutes to get up and running from the ground. And I thought I'd share how to do that today. So before we get started, I'm going to kind of do some inventory of what files we'll have out there and what their usages are. The first thing we have is our basic nant.build file. This is our nant file. This will actually do all the replacing of token values for us. This is our build script or our uh, build file that will actually just kick off our nant. And I have this folder called config. Inside config are two files, and you'll notice they both have the .template extension. That's by design. This first file, local properties.xml.template. What this is, is these are the values that each developer can potentially overwrite or change to meet their own needs. And the reason it's that template is I don't actually want to modify this directly or have each developer modify this. I want them to make changes to, you know, copy it and make changes to a second version of this file. So I want to create a .template so that they know it's a template file. And the next one is a web config template. This is actually my web config, but the end result output of this process will be an actual web.config file. So I want to use the .template as something that the NAMP process can consume, modify, and then spit out a modified version of it. And then I have a folder called source. This is where my web config will be dumped when the process is all done. So let's go back and take a look at our web config. Inside my web config I have two things, two connection strings, a production and a unit test. And pretty much everything's pretty standard. If you've created a connection string before, you've kind of seen this before. The only difference here is I have these at server production at signs or at server test at at db test at and so on and so forth. What these are, these are tokens that I can you can place in my config file and have nant search for and find these values and replace them with other values. Let's take a look at my template my local properties template file that I have. What this is, this is a full blown nant script that basically just holds property values. And these values will also be stored in my main NANT script, but they are overridden by these values if I want them to be that way. Let's back up real quick and take a look at my NANT.build file. This is my main NANT file, and you'll notice that these properties are both here as well as my local template. The way that this works is I'm going to say, you know what, if I have a file that's a user file, go ahead and take that and include that into my main NANT file. And this statement here will actually allow my included properties to overwrite all of these so it's as they didn't exist at all. And then I'm going to say, if I have a web config, let's go ahead and delete it because I want to start over. And I'm going to copy my .template file, this here, into my output directory and removing the .template extension. And then I'm going to use some special init keywords here, filter chain replace token, and then I'm going to provide all my token names. You'll notice server underscore production matches this right here. So I'm going to one for one list out all my individual tokens and then I'm going to assign values to them. And These values happen to be properties that are defined above. These are also the same properties that are defined in my external file. Now the reason I define these both in my main NANT script as well as my external script is to allow each developer to decide whether they want to overwrite the default. These are the default settings. If I don't create a local properties file I get the default that come with it. If I do create it, I get the ones that are inside of my local file. 
Let's take a look and see how this would actually run if I run this at the command line. I'm going to run this in initial setup.bat. And you'll notice it copied a file to my source directory. This should be my output directory. And it did. It, it copied, a, copied the web.config.template in here, renamed it to web.config. And if I take a look at it, I've got data source equals and then default prod database, default test database. These values all map one for one to the values that are in my included init file. So right now, this would be done as if I didn't make any changes, and you just consume the file as is. Now, what if I need to make changes, and I want my own local copy or own local database information to be put into this web, web config? Well, in order to do this, all I do is go to my web, my local properties XML template. I'd copy that. Go ahead and rename this real quick, and I'm going to rename, remove the dot template extension, and I'm going to bring this into here. And you'll notice that all I'm going to do here is change something like prod database to demo database. You know, and I'm just putting in random values here just to demonstrate what's going to happen. Now, now because I do have this local file, my NANET scripts can actually execute this logic and consume these values and should output this in my new web config. Let's go ahead and delete this so we're sure we don't over you know have any weird issues going on. I'm going to rerun this. Now you'll notice one thing's a little different here. I actually got some more output. If I scroll back up up here, all I have is config and a copy. Whereas down here I have a few loading, so I'm loading my local, moving my my machine specific settings, and then I have my copy again. Let's take a look at what happened this time. This time when it ran, it actually replaced my my token values from the default to be my token values from my local properties. This did exactly what I wanted. So there you go. I, I've got a very simple solution that will let you take a configuration file, tokenize it, use NNT with a few lines of code, replace those tokens with either default values or local property values at runtime, and do this via a NNT script and allow each developer to have their own local copy of this local properties.xml file. Now what's nice about this is this local properties.xml file is not checked into source control so nobody's file will be overwritten by anybody else. And In fact we actually want to go a step further because we have many projects that we want to do this and we don't want to have to recreate this over and over again is we actually named local properties.machineName.xml that way, if we did check it in by mistake, I won't overwrite another developer on the team and so forth and so on. So I hope you learned that within a few minutes and a few lines of code, you can actually tokenize your configuration files, create an ant script that allows you to replace those tokens with meaningful values. So, till next time.